I greet the church and those who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite everyone in reverence to the reading of the word to stand up. And we should open our, our Bibles in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10. We are going to read from verse 8. New Testament. Para essa porcaria, se eu não. Se eu não sei se sonar muito, fica no meio do que eu vou ler. Amen. Have you found Romans? Chapter 10. From verse 8 onwards, it says. Uh, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your head. That's the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your head that God has raised, risen, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And for with the head, uh, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses in is made unto salvation. Until verse uh, 11, brethren can sit down. Verse 11 says, For this scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame.
Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our brethren, the word shows us in a very clear way that throughout the entire earthly ministry of Jesus, he always had objections. There were always people questioning Jesus. There were always people trying to uh, catch him in a uh, mistake in his actions and his words. There was always there was always someone that doubted what he came to do. And it is interesting to to notice that those that were there questioning Jesus they should be those that should have believed in his word because they were his people they were the Jewish people and we will see that, G that God throughout history of the Jewish people God always prepared this nation for the arrival of Jesus the Messiah if we go through history from the beginning from Genesis from creation from the first moment in which Adam chooses to be independent from God and not to obey God's instruction we notice that God was not caught by surprise God was not caught by surprise when he says on the first day uh, there may be light and there was light that light in the first day is different than the light from the fourth day and the lights that were created on the fourth day and God speaks with his word there may be light and there was light at that moment God was already preparing man to believe in Jesus because on the fourth day God created the, the other lights the sun, the stars but the light which was the revelation which was salvation Jesus which was the project of salvation of men in Jesus had already been presented to men we should rem remember that Jesus was not created on that day because the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit they are eternal what God presents to man is the project of salvation of man because this light is greater than the light that we can see with our eyes it's greater than the light of the sun we can see this in the experience of the Apostle Paul when he was going on a way to uh, another city he saw a light that was brighter than the light of the sun at noon and this is the salvation Jesus so we see this throughout the Bible God preparing people in order to truly be able to receive the eternal government but the people always doubted they didn't believe they didn't accept they questioned well how can I not understand that when Abraham picked up his son Isaac for the sacrifice and when they were there alone when the moment in which Abraham goes to sacrifice Abraham God tell, tells him Abraham don't do this and Abraham stopped and looked and there was the lamb this lamb is Jesus it is the representation of Jesus it is the illustration of Jesus in that animal if you 
read the entire Bible, we see this. God preparing people for the arrival of the Messiah, the true Son of God. And we see here Paul, who was also Jewish, who also had an experience with Jesus, who had a, an experience on the way to Damascus, and where he, he really saw and understood, understood who was really speaking to him. And now he was, Paul was speaking to the Church of Roman, Romans, to the inhabitants of that city, and he was speaking about Jesus, about the Word of God. And my brother, uh, it is interesting that was not man simply having his own experience, having his cure, having his prayers answered. This is not important. What is important is not the miracles. It is not important that prayers answered. What is important is that we have an experience with the Word of God. Because the Word of God, when it enters into man's heart, it operates with efficacy. And it operates transforming and bringing a new understanding to man. So Jesus, when he, when he was here with, amongst us, he operated many miracles. And many times he asked, if you believe. Jesus didn't ask if they believed in the miracles. Was what was Jesus was asking is, if you believe in the word of, of, uh, of the Lord, if you believe, you see the glory of God. No, I need a cure, I need this, I need that. And then Jesus was, would ask, do you believe? Because it is important that man believes, but not on the miracles, not on the cures. Um, a while ago, I heard an experience of a young man. He was... He was dealing with uh, machinery, he operated machinery. And he operated with his hands, uh, with those dangerous machines. He had an accident in one, one of his hands. And he needed to m have a surgery, a, a risky surgery. And he might have, doing the surgery, having to amputate fingers. So he went to the church, began to pray, I had an experience with God. and. God chose to cure him. He didn't even have to do any surgery. From on the one day to the next, he didn't have to go to the doctors. And time passed by. He left church. He never came back to the church. And a few days later, a um, sister from the church met him. And she asked, Hey, my brother, you left the church? What happened? And he said, No, glory to God. Everything is fine. I'm cured. God cured my my hand. My hand is great. I didn't have to go through a surgery. Now I'm cured. And then, and then she asked, "What? How about now?" And then he said, "There's no reason for me to go to church. I'm cured. I don't need it anymore." Man is like this. When man receives his blessing from God, the answer to prayer, many times, he loses. He misses the great meaning, which is salvation in Jesus. Because man does not understand, him, understand what, what God brought with Jesus. It's not cure for this life. It's not the benefit for this life. It's nothing for this life. God can surely give us what we need, what we want. He has power to answer prayers, to open doors, to cure us physically to make us prosper. God can do this. If it is uh, in God's plans. But there was not the, not the reason why God sent His Son. That's not why Jesus came to the world. He emptied Himself. He, become man, he became man in order for you to have a, a large bank account or in order to have a healthy life on earth. No, that's not the reason. Why having only physical health, so you can heave, live 30, 40, 50, 80. Today, nowadays, you can live up to 140, right? <laughs> They're promising that we're going to live up to 140 years. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, 
why living for so long? What is worth for man to earn everything and losing his eternal life? That's what the Bible says. God didn't send Jesus simply for you to have a good life here on this world. But Jesus came to the world in order for you to be able to reach eternal life in the presence of God. And you will only receive this if you understand and accept the Word of God which is the Lord Jesus himself because his name in heaven is the word and John said that John said this that Jesus is the word of God and now Paul begins to explain the word is with you in your mouth and in your heart this is the word of faith that we preach if you confess to the Lord Jesus with your mouth and in your heart you believe that God resurrected him from the dead, you will be saved. The word cannot only be on man's mouth. The word also needs to be on man's heart because what mouth speaks of what the heart is full of. So if you keep the word of God, if you keep Jesus in your heart, then you'll be able to speak of what you are living. You're not going to speak it like recklessly. You're not going to speak something that is only on your mind. But you're going to speak of something that God is operating in your life. That's why Paul said that word is in your mouth. It's in your heart as well. That's the word of faith. Because God, when He operates on man and He accepts Jesus, He confesses, it is because on his heart he already believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus is the Word of God. Because Jesus is everything that man needs. Because otherwise there is no meaning for us to be here tonight. There is no reason for us to, to come here to the service just because you want to uh, an answer to your prayer or because you want God to do something for you here for this earth. No, it, you need to believe in Jesus. You need to leave Him and accept Him as the Savior of your life. And now then, you express and you confess and you place it in your heart and then you will express the blessing of, that the Lord is operating in your life and with the mouth you make a confession for salvation. Because man needs to say what God is doing in his life because we have been called our, our experience is this from the moment in which you begin to learn about the word of God from the moment you begin to understand the mysteries, mysteries of God only the Holy Spirit can give you the understanding and make you comprehend in the depth what is salvation in Jesus because, because man's reason, because man's understanding, you will never be able to understand this. That's what Paul was trying to ex explain there. We ex see the experience of Philippus there. He's, when he was there, he saw, and he said, how am I going to understand if nobody explains it to me? I know the, the history. I know what God sh has shown, what the Lord has shown through Moses, the commandments the experience, the instruction, everything that God has shown to Moses, everything that God through revelation has given to Moses in order to pass it on to his people was something that was revealed, that was prophesied, that was pointing out to a new day. And this new day is today. It's the day in which you will accept Jesus as the Savior of your life. This is the new day. You no longer pay attention to history. If you, with your heart, you believe for justice and you make confession with your mouth for salvation. It is the Holy Spirit that leads men to live in Jesus. When Jesus departs, he goes to heaven. 
when Jesus had resurrected, was not Jesus dead? Jesus resurrected when he went to heaven. The Holy Spirit comes down as his replacement, and now the responsibility of the Holy Spirit is this: is to lead men to accept the Word of God, because that's what matters. It's not the miracles. It's not the benefits of salvation. It's none of it. Is the Word of God. And if you do this tonight, if you accept Him as the Savior of your life, if you let the Holy Spirit operate in your heart, then you will confess that Jesus truly is the Messiah, the one who was sent by God, the one that can transform your life. Because the Church of God is already victorious. We are victorious. We don't pray. The, the right way is, uh, you need to know one thing. You pray when you're going through the trials, but now you can pray from now on with the victory in your, on your hands. Because a church, a faithful servant, the one who has the Word of God in his heart, the one who has Jesus is in heart, he does not pray for God to give him a victory. He already prays and he already faces the battles with victories on his hands because God has promised this to us. Maybe you you are going through trials like every one of us. Maybe your trial may be worse than mine or maybe my trial is worse than yours. It doesn't matter. But no one thing. The victory has already been given by God. You know when? When Jesus died on that cross 2,000 years ago. From that point, a uh, path was opened up for your victory. And today, you can face this with new eyes, with, with a new understanding, knowing that at any moment, you may say, Glory to Jesus, glory to God, for the victory that I have already been decreed and only today, God honored my life and God gave me this as a present. The church lives us like this. Day by day, step by step, we live in this way because it uh, was pleasing to the Lord to give us this great blessing. So here's the word for us because the church of the Lord is victorious. And today we can be become a part of this church not what of what is human but uh, of the spiritual faithful church we don't preach name or entity or we don't preach anything a religion what we preach is the word of god and it is the living word it's not only about knowing the bible it's not only about knowing about the word of life but we preach about the living word because the living word it operates on the understanding on the the, the word of life operates on man's understanding but the living word operates on man's heart transforming you in order for you to live in the presence of God let us hear a song of praise
invite the whole church to stand up. Glory to Jesus. Somebody spoke uh, about me to Jesus, and somebody told about Jesus to me. Do you believe that Jesus is the Savior of our life? Amen. 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 Oh, okay. I was a little, little concerned. Was this a man uh, re recklessly, or was an amen that came from the heart? That's right. That's right. It's not worth only to say um, recklessly, because the word of the Lord has to be in the mouth and in the heart. And if it is in your heart, this amen is the amen, amen of the soul. Yeah. The amen of your soul. Because <coughs> it's happy. Because it knows that it's going back to the Creator. Amen? That's why it's important. Important that we know that Jesus truly is the one that can resolve and has the power to resolve any situation that we may be going through. No one else. Sometimes people that think that they have all the means, oh, um, all the ways. It doesn't exist. All of it is knowing the Word of God. There are many atheists out there that don't believe in God, but know the whole biblical history. Do you know that? There are many people out there that never enter into a church, and they know more about the history of the church than you who are here. They know details, but they only know history. What is it passes by, what is forgotten, what is only spoken, uh, is not in your heart. But when we believe in Jesus, as He being the Son of God, He operates in depth. And you'll be able to see that you will not need anything else, only to have Jesus as the intermediator. That's what Jesus is. He's our defense attorney. He's the, the one who is on the right side of the Father, interceding on our behalf, interceding on your behalf. When you are out there on the streets, in difficulties, in your daily trials, Jesus is interceding for you on your behalf to the Father. The victories that you receive, they are because He is on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you, for me. Isn't that true? That's what God wants you to understand, that you don't need anything else. In order for you to go to heaven, you just need to accept Jesus. And God is also speaking to a man who entered here that a while ago he had a dream. He's a little concerned ab about this dream. This dream is causing him to be always worried. He's always remembering this dream. He doesn't understand this, what this dream means. But he always remembers this dream. And the Lord tonight is saying that this dream is what God wants to do in your life. God wants to give to you this discomfort. Is the Holy Spirit who is causing discomfort in your in your life? You went here tonight because it's this Holy Spirit that gave you this dream. He's speaking to your heart. You need to have a new life. You need to have a new hope in a life that will give you the right to be in the presence of God. You may have not spoken about this dream with anyone. For sure you didn't. But God gave you this dream and is telling you so not not for you to feel this uncomfortable, but that's not the reason. But God wants is saying this to show you that He knows you. In the same way he f he created you, he wants to give you an opportunity to live eternally in his presence. Let us bring this service to a close, and then afterwards we're going to be at your disposal to pray.
pray with you in order for you to receive the complete blessing that God has for your life. Let us close our eyes. Our God, we want to praise your name, Lord. Because another week is beginning and we know that is, this is going to be another week of victories in your presence. We praise you, Lord, because your angels have already been sent to go on our places of work at home and to go wherever we are. We, we will have the presence of your angels ministering on our behalf. And it's with joy that we glorify your name tonight. And we decree, Lord, and we say that you are our God and that you are everything for us. That's why we're here as a church with a single voice giving glory and hallelujah to your name. And we ask you that you may accept our praise and our adoration. And we ask you that you remain with us and never allow us to be discouraged in our walk and that we may never give up, but we may only look to our target, which is to be in your presence. And that's what makes us go back to your house, is to know that one day we, you, we will be with you in eternity. Receive our praise is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And your name is say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Uh, this morning we had here a special service with the children intermediary adolescents. A lot of visitors, people that were here, even for the first time, visitors for the first time, there are the pictures, even turn off the light, uh, it was a great blessing, it was a great victory, and our praise is that the Lord may continue to operate in our homes. This is the victory of the church to have a home in the presence of the Lord, amen? We make ourselves available to you who visit us and we, and we say peace to the Lord. Thank <laughs> you.